All right, so welcome, guys, to the second episode of Star Trek Adventures Amalthea. Uh, I don't really have much in the way of announcements except for one or two things. Uh, first off being that we are sort of... Uh, how do I want to say this? So in terms of mission compendiums, I've just put out a brand new one. Uh, it is the Andromeda Chronicles. And it follows pretty much the same storyline that the Adiona group did. Um, however, moving forward, um, I'm not sure which mission compendium to do next. And I would love it if you would uh, vote. Uh, there should be a tweet somewhere on my Twitter uh, with a link to a straw poll. And, uh, you know, cast your vote. Uh, the current choices are either a uh, Imperial class vessel or a TOS station. And I think the TOS station is ahead at the moment, but... You know, that could change, being the internet and all. Uh, up next for announcements is uh, come March... What day is that? Uh, I believe March 9th we might have to take off, and I'm just giving everyone sort of a month warning on that. Uh, but other than that, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, today, I believe, Prier, you have the opening log. That I do. Chief Medical Officer's Log, Stardate 62851.2. When I said I wanted adventure, this is not exactly what I was imagining. Imagining, The past 24 hours have been essentially a blur. Uh, we've been putting this new medical bay to the test with injuries from our run-in with, well, if the rumors on the ship are correct, a Romulan Warbird. Uh, granted, I've been busy here and am relying on rumors, but from... That what information has come into my doors? The Elfion has a Tholian in its uh, from its past, a Commander Nestrine uh, in its brig, and Lieutenant Commander Drake uh, has secured the Warbird. This is only the murmurs. Uh, uh, there's also only some murmurs of the survivors of the Murther maneuver, whatever that might have been. Um, anyway, judging by the report that has just recently landed on my desk, the fleet is in rough shape uh, all of the ships are damaged in some way, supplies are being lim uh, becoming limited and the shortest way back to Federation space is just over 10 years for the Amalthea uh, that is if the wormhole hasn't collapsed from this little interaction. A meeting is being called of all the best minds in the fleet to discuss how we proceed from, uh, from here when I told Commander Gortag that I wanted to see uh, what this medical bay could do I didn't mean this soon. End log. Alrighty. So, we're going to start things off with a meeting between the Amalthea senior staff. And uh, I figure that uh, given that our bridge actually has a, uh, a hollow table, let's use it. So, it is everyone, uh, including Ensign Hamasi, since she's sort of serving as your science uh, liaison at the moment. And I'm going to let you guys role play to your heart's content. Okay. So, first things first, what's the status of the warbird? Its shields are disabled. And it is uh, no engines currently. It looks like the crew is attempting repairs, but it will take some time. Hmm. It's my understanding, Captain, that Lieutenant Drake has just, or Lieutenant Commander Drake, has just taken several of the newly arrived shuttles with Marine boarding parties. Right. Status of the rest of the fleet? And Free Pack is just off in the corner writing furiously on a pad. He's not good. Not good. Let me tell you. If I was selling this as salvage, I'd, I'd gouge them on the price and then make sure I was warping out of the system before they got a closer look. None of this is serviceable. The Amalthea sensors are down. That's going to take months, even if I had the parts. Now, I could take the uh, the Class 2 outpost parts in, in Cargo Bay 3, but I'd have to convert them. That's going to take time and people. I'll tell you, this is, this is too much. The Mayon's Comrade is down. Can't talk to that. The Red November, you might as well tie a stick to the front of it for all it does. It's got no phasers. The Ophion, I wouldn't trust that thing at high warp. Its structural integrity is down. And don't even think about taking that into MVAM mode. 
what the M is mode. What, uh, and he scribbles it out, something on the pad. The only thing they made out of this is the Lysithia. And I mean, she's got knocked around, but she can at least stand up in a fight. This is going to take some ingenuity. Uh, Captain, I don't think I could have said it better than Freepok just did. It's not looking good. The two options we have now are to cannibalize the warbird for parts to repair our ship, or possibly the spare parts we have in the cargo for a starbase, and use that to supplement the our ships. Mm. Oh, we're going to have a hard enough time convincing the Romulans to play ball as it is. I don't think cannibalizing their ship will do us any favors. And I am not leaving an entire crew of Romulans sitting in the middle of the Gamma Quadrant where they can go around causing goodness knows how much damage. Well, if we... Well, if we leave them on a habitable planet without their ship, they can't come back to get us, but I know some of you have a little more morals than I do, especially dealing with Romulans. That's, That's a very good point, Captain. Can I yes. speak freely? Please do may not like it, but you've essentially got a gun to their head right now. And whether or not you want to use that gun is up to you. But let me tell you, bluffing always comes in handy. You know, yeah. you, I suggest I, we break that rock and the warbird down, because I'm going to need all the damn parts I can get. We cannot mm. have, have a, a potentially armed um, enemy following us or left alone to harry us from the back. Mm. Yeah, so but, at the very but, least, we can't let them keep their cloaking device. Well, and also, I'd like to bring up the fact that if these numbers are correct that uh, Commander Drake has sent, there's over 600 Romulans on board that ship. So right now, being on that ship is the easiest place for them to be. If we bring them here and tear down that ship, uh, we're going to be really tight on space. And that's saying something on this ship. But, I agree with Chief Freepok. The best thing to do would be to tear that ship apart and use the parts. Or, uh, I'm not up on uh, stations. Uh, could could we build the station that we have in our hold and use it as a dry dock? Uh, dry dock for what? Dock for no. what? Once we dock at the dock, we don't have parts to fix the ship. We'd just be sitting mm. tied to the dock. Hmm. Uh. Uh. Besides, right right now we need all the resources we have getting the fleet into some semblance of order. Well, and mm. Freya Puck tosses a pad up onto the table. Here's third option. Third. Plenty of rocks out there. They gotta have something on them. I say we get together, we get send the Lysithi out, we find something with some resources. Now, I worked in a refinery, I can throw one together. We got plenty of cargo space for it. Maybe I can cannibalize the Class 2 outpost, make it into a refinery, Start getting some geranium. Then we can have enough to get all the ships back together. But it's going to take time. It's going to take people. Yes, I think you're right. We're going to have to think about establishing some sort of base before we think about hit striking out. Um, uh, what, what's the state of the sensors on the Red November? The Red November's got sensors. Doesn't have any phasers, though. Mm. Captain Merthyn, if I may. Sir? Dava? The we do have several cavernous shuttle bays. If we could unload all the shuttle bays and dismantle the decks, we the we could conceivably turn the Jupiter class vessel into a dry dock, at least a partial dry dock, po possibly enough to fit perhaps the Red November or at least half of her inside while we pr while the crew can effect repairs. Hmm. I just think we'll hold off on that for now, though. We're, we're going to need to keep the hangar bay operational just for the Amalthea's sake. We're flying blind. We need to have the escorts and fighters as our eyes and ears while we're traveling. Exactly. And we got plenty of suits. We can work on the ship in space. It's better to work on the ship in space. Oh, it just makes I, sense as okay. an engineer. I'm, think, I, I, I'm thinking our, our first priority, figuring out where we are. Let's pair off the Ophion and the Red November together. Red November can run sensor sweeps while the Ophion runs defense on it if it needs it. Uh, 
Now, remind, remind me what state the Lysithia are in. It's well, the best. And it's the, the best one. out of all of them. And if I remember correctly, isn't the Lysithia the one that is set up to do these kind of scans? Wouldn't it be better to send it out True. on its own? I mean, that ship mapped a chunk of another galaxy. That is a good point. And it would be good. And actually, it would be useful to keep a decent number of ships here in case the Ro in case some of the Romulan crew decide to get heroic. We it will take some time to handle and um, subdue the Romulan crew. It might be might most be reasonable to send uh, all the ships, but the Amalthea in the cardinal directions, northeast, southwest, and have them fly for. Uh, several hours and scan what's in the immediate area, then return back and report while we handle effect repairs and deal with the Romulans. Mm. Well, far well the Amalthea's crew is large enough to handle dealing with the Romulans on its own, especially with backup. So I think that'll be our port of order. The Lysithia will head out in a search pattern in one direction, the Ophion and the Red November will te team up and head in the other direction. Uh, do, do, uh, do a standard sweep of the sector, find any points of notice, uh, report back. Cap uh, Captain? Yes? Uh, I uh, I don't want to remind you, but... um, And Gorteg will kind of, like, nod his head towards the doors, like, towards where Skull's office is. Uh, maybe we should run past the Admiral, plans for other ships... Hmm. And but Gortig will have a smile on his face, like he's completely agreeing with you. Ah, yeah. But he's just kind of like reminding you of the chain of command. Yeah, he's like, ah, yes, thank you, Gortig. But I completely agree with everything that we've said at this table. We we that is the best course of action. All right. Well, I'll take the I'll take these briefings up to the admiral. See. See if he's willing to put a stamp on them. One more, and one more. we'll do that. In 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 the meantime, Gorteg and Darval, uh, how do you feel about writing up some kind of crew roster to distribute the Romulan crew throughout the fleet? Um, I can absolutely do that, but. Until we decide on what we are going to do about Chief Freepok's idea of a refinery, I and he'll say with a very toothy Klingon grin, that leaves us with six hundred a six hundred person labor force for said refinery. Yeah. One should also and Mertrin sort of raises an eyebrow and goes. That's not how the Federation does things, Gortig. And that is why you are the captain, and I am simply offering a second opinion. He says with another toothy grin. Versazo raises his little robot arm. Yes, Versazo. One other point. It's the we do might have to consider the having holding trials. Find out who was responsible for the assaults on the world. Oh, we're definitely holding a trial on our stream, and depending on what we find out, maybe some of the bridge crew of of the Warbird. But first of all, I I'm hoping, which is a, always a dangerous thing when Romulans are involved, but I'm hoping that their desire to get back home will persuade them to see sense. In the meantime, let's see what the Admiral has to say. Alrighty. So what we're going to do now uh, is we're not going to cut straight to the Admiral meeting because I figured it would be a probably a better use of time if we had all of the captains at one table at once. So let's actually cut to the Ophion. And uh, to answer your question, Gorteg, uh, this would be roughly about two or three days after the attack. Okay, so the the warbird has been pacified and all of that kind of stuff. Correct. Got it. All right. So we're going to cut to the Ophion conference room where the senior staff of the Ophion is currently meeting. And it's important because I've given Locke some very important notes. Mm. Yeah, what? 
You should see a handout. Should be uh -oh. under logs. You should see lock notes. Oh, there it is. All right. Totally was not warned about that. <laughs> so yeah, Panek, it's your meeting. Go ahead. Thank and you for coming. I'm sure your duties uh, are m most important right now, but I need a status ass assessment of uh, the current ship. Uh, the current ship status. Uh, CPO As... Mido, SCPO Cranston. What is their current uh, structural status and damage report? Not good. <laughs> um, Captain, if uh, if I may, uh, have you <clears throat> ever heard of Swiss cheese? I believe this is some sort of edible food from Earth. Yes, it happens to be very thinly sliced cheese full of holes. This is relevant to your report somehow, Mr. Cranston? Because that's about the state of the ship right now. When we tried to initiate uh, multi-vector and the wormhole pretty much slammed us back together, it messed us up big time. Which also makes it highly... Um, we shouldn't go to Q QSD. It, that is a very rigorous and stressful... Uh, process to begin with, and with the current structure of the ship, we would be shredded Swiss cheese. So, then, uh, let me put it in a more formal terms. Uh, weapons, computers, sensors, comms are all perfectly fine. The engines took a little bit of a hit, but the biggest problem is the structure of the ship. Trying to go to MVMA, stuck in that little warp, in that wormhole, and, uh, all of the uh, gravity of the situation, let's put it that way, uh, we're, really. we're pretty bad. Yeah, there, there are holes in the, all over the ship, several of the bulkheads are bent, it is, it is a mess, Captain. What um, is your time frame for the uh, repairs? So I think this is when I jump in. Uh, and I will echo what... <laughs> Cranston will say whatever the GM is going to say. Alright. <laughs> so, rules as written... Uh, these were introduced in the command book, page 96, if anyone is curious. Uh, a vessel docked at a starbase repairs one breach a day unless the system was destroyed. And destroyed systems need extra days equal to the ship's scale. Now, we're going to be doing something similar, but obviously you don't have a starbase to dock at to do that. So what, what it's going to be is that these values are going to be tripled. Meaning that if you have the supplies and know-how, you can repair one breach every three days. Except if your system is disabled or destroyed. And that's important, especially for the Amalthea, because the sensors were disabled on the Amalthea. Which means that it will need... Uh, so the ship scale is seven and times that by three, you're looking at at least a month's worth of work just to get the sensors on the Amalthea back online. If that, yeah, if you're the, the Amalthea is basically operating like a submarine currently. Correct. And its sonar is turned off. Exactly. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna sort of copy paste my notes here into a handout for you all. But I'd also like to point out that we now have a handout that should be visible to everyone. Uh, it is currently titled The Supplies List. Now, obviously, I didn't put in for the Ophion or the Lysithia cargo logs because I wasn't exactly sure uh, what Panek or what Beckett would have brought with them normally. So you guys can fill that out to your heart's content. But just keep in mind, we are tracking this somewhat. I'm not going to be like super uh, anal retentive about, you know, do you have X amounts of parts you know, we're going to ballpark things, but I would like to Where sort of capture... Where are the capture... self-stealing stem bolts? Exactly. Um, I would like to sort of capture the atmosphere Voyager initially had, where resources are something that is very important. Um, but that's all I have to say. You can you can keep on role-playing. Captain. Uh, Sick Bay's supplies are holding well, and with working with uh, SCPO Cranston, I've taken on the additional task of attempting to repair the biomedic bio the biogel packs rather than just tossing them out as each one may come important at some point in the future i've also have an updated casualty list 
We've uh, sadly lost five people, primarily during the incident with the smashing us back together. Uh, that was a rather traumatic experience. And we have 15 people who are probably going to be disabled. If we were on a starbase, I would recommend we'd have the ability to get them back up and running. However, we may have to break out wheelchairs, crutches, and other uh, mo mobility or accessibility devices in the meantime. Mm, this is disconcerting. I'm looking at the pad. You say very well. Please place the five crewmen in stasis uh, until we can prepare for funerary rites. Uh, we just we don't have time right now. Uh, the entire fleet is currently damaged, and we just do not have the resources to repair everybody. Cranston, what can we salvage from the cargo bays and reconvert into usable material? Well, I've been thinking about that myself, and he'll slide a, pass a uh, pad across the table to Panek. Uh, I've got you a list of pretty much every extra supply we had. Um, uh, I didn't ask for permission, but I didn't think you'd mind, being we were going somewhere far away, and kind of scrounged up some extra stuff from Deep Space Nine. So we... But forward thinking. I appreciate we, it. We are okay. But there is not much in that list that we can spare to everybody else. So uh, I think myself and Mito, um, we, uh, we should be able to get us up and running, but we're, we're looking at quite a while. Maybe um, better part of a month. Well, I'm sure the Admiral is currently formulating a plan for the entire fleet with his staff. But right now, our concern is getting the Ophion together. Our structural integrity is very low. We will not stand up into a fight if one comes along. I want to get those, those breaches sealed as fast as possible. Start converting material into uh, bulkheads. Get, uh, see if you can reinforce the uh, structural integrity field with other systems. Uh, if it comes to it, the Ophion needs to be able to stand into a fight to protect the fleet. Yes, sir. Between me and Mito, we will work some miracles and we'll get us back up and running as soon as we can. And we'll make sure. Bush. What is that? What is status? Uh, isn't it Lieutenant Quackenbush? Sorry, 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 missing what you said. Uh, what is their tactical status? Unfortunately, uh, tactical seems to have come out completely unscathed. Weapons are operational, uh, but the tactical teams are all all made it out without a scratch for the most part. At least one thing is good. Mr. Cranston, I want you to take some of the supplies that we're denoting for conversion, and I want you to set them aside for Lieutenant Heveren to see if she can convert any of them into... Uh, artificial appendice, appendix, uh, limbs for any crew members. Uh, Having as many of them up and about as we can is really going to help us. Uh, yes, sir. I had already kind of planned on it, and um, Lieutenant, I, uh, for my own personal reasons, I have uh, um, I have some um, prosthesis designs that I can give to you. And Cranston will kind of flex his own his own prosthesis hand, uh, and uh, I uh, I will I will do exactly what you said, Captain. We'll get these people back up and running, and with all the limbs that they're supposed to have, and he'll just kind of crack a smirk. Thank you, Cranston. I have some ideas of my own that I'll I'll work with you. I have I've always had an interest in cybernetics and prosthetics plus cybernetics. I could have some of these crew members even more efficient than they were with all their organic parts, sir. I don't think that will be necessary. <laughs> right now, the basics will have to do, and Cranston's main priority is getting the Ophion together. And and we will. Like I said, we will work miracles and we will get the Ophion back up to fight in shape. If I can make... If I can address the um, elephantine creature that's in our brig, uh, the... Uh, 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 ah, changing uh, the life support system for the entire brig to support one individual has proven rather uh, costly to the life support systems on the rest of the ship. Um, we would have to... I'm in the process of designing an isolation suit for him, but it's going to take some time. Yes, um, if I recall correctly, the last time we had a 
fully on board, didn't we convert Beta Bridge into an environment? Yes, but that was so they could monitor the uh, various systems and sensors. It was very costly to the bridge, to quite a bit of da um, damage from the yes. Well, the thing is, we're not going to be using multi-vector mode anytime soon, so it's not like we need Beta Bridge at any point in the near future. Well, maybe we'd probably definitely take a, a cargo bay or even a, a quarters and convert them to a similar state. We don't it doesn't necessarily need to be a bridge. One of the yeah, yeah. interior quarters, possibly near uh, an EPS conduit, where we could use the electroplasma as an artifact way of heating it, to strip out some of the insulation. Cranston will kind of nod and, uh, yeah, uh, d that'll work a lot better than trying to change the entire brig. I mean, uh, one person can do that. I, I can spare one person to run up there, change the quarters, cut off all communication to the, the computer, so that way this, our guest, can't access anything. I... Oh, don't worry. I'll be keeping a close watch on the security systems while that thing's on board. Please do, Mr. Quiet English. I will... It makes a fairly effective bridge, because if we lower the temperature of the hallway out beyond it, if they do manage to escape the quarters, they'll instantly begin to freeze, and the temperature differential will be very uncomfortable. Now that is an idea I can get behind. I appreciate all of these suggestions. However, I have not yet received communication from the Admiral regarding our guest. For right now, let's keep him in the brig, but be prepared to uh, convert quarters for him if the Admiral should decide that we will be uh, keeping our guest much longer. Also, Captain, it's um, it's probably not use useful for immediate survival, but as uh, the resident expert on QSD, uh, one of the things I could be working on is bringing up a shuttle to take out the QSD. The unfortunate thing is we, we do have quite a bit of a benamite to create the slipstream corridor. However, the, the amount of crystals required to travel the, well, we have maybe 20% of the crystals needed to travel the 20,000 light years to the Bajoran wormhole. We're not gonna be able to make it, but, uh, a small shuttle should be able to yes. be much more efficient with the Benamite. And if we equ um, equip some sort of slip shuttle uh, with that, which would be a, a little bit of work to put that much uh, engine into a shuttle, it could make uh, the journey to the Bajoran wormhole in as little as three or four days. And if the wormhole is still open, then they could report back to our situation to Starfleet Command. Yeah. What are your estimates on a return journey if the wormhole is not open? Would they be able to make it back? Uh, well, with the, it's a small amount of Benamite, but a shuttle would require such little, they could almost travel at QSD indefinitely. So it'd be, again, uh, three days to the wormhole, or maybe nine days, ten days to the back to the, back to the Federation space. I want you to write me a report up, Mr. Locke, and I will present it to the Admiralty. Aye, sir. Uh, if there is anything else that I need to be made aware of? Uh, it should also be noted that the Midas Array, that Starfleet equipped to communicate with the Delta Quadrant, could be effective means of communication, but it would need to be re-aimed towards us. So it's something we could set up and work towards, but until we contact Starfleet and let them know to actually um, recalibrate the Midas Array, it is not going to be useful. They cannot just start beaming randomly towards us. If we are able to reestablish contact with the Federation, I will make sure that this suggestion is passed along. All right. And if there's no else, I believe you all have your duties. You are dismissed. All right. So we're going to cut to a brief scene between uh, Drake and Skull before we have the actual sort of captain's meeting. So, Drake, uh, you arrive outside the Admiral's office, and Cam is sitting at her desk and sort of stops you before you go in, and she says, Ah, Lieutenant Commander, uh, I take it you're here to report on your, shall we say, capture of the Romulan ship. Uh, that's, that's right, Commander. Um, just here to see the Admiral as he wanted. Well, uh, to put it bluntly, he's not in a very good mood, so 
take that as you will. Oh. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the heads up, Cam. Yeah. And uh, she pushes a button and the door is open. Uh, Drake will walk in and as per every other conversation he's ever had with Skull in Skull's office, he will stand at rigid attention in front of the desk. Uh, Skull is busy just flipping through pads with a scowl on his face. and He sees Drake coming in and he will... Uh, put the pads down, put on a tired smirk as he plays this game hundred for the 150th time. At ease, Lieutenant Commander. And Drake will go to at ease standing. Mm-hmm. What, uh, run me through the uh, seizure of the Romulan vessel. How, uh, what, are the, what casualty reports are, do you have? Well, we got off really lucky. Um, there are over 600 Romulans on board that ship. Um, we took a few injuries to the team uh, of Marines that I took over there, um, but nothing um, uh, nothing fatal. Um, right now, I've got the rest of the Marines, and I, I pulled a couple of maybe a security team from the uh, Amalthea with the... Uh, uh, with the okay of Commander Gorteg to uh, help hold up those 600 Romulans in the cargo bay of the uh, Benella, is as the ship is called. Um, right now, I think that's going to be the best bet for us to keep them at. If we bring them over here, we're going to pretty much, well, the entire break will be full, and then some. No, we certainly don't have the space for them. What? Uh, what is their initial attitudes like? Are were they cooperative? Did they put up much of a fight? Oh What's no. their uh, command structure? They they fought. They they did not roll over. We we had to fight them, and it was serious firefights to take over the bridge and engineering. As standard procedure, those are the two places we go for. Once we took the bridge and um, uh, was able to. Um, take control of the bridge anyways. The the rest of them kind of capitulated, but uh, we still found scattered fights, small clusters all throughout the entire ship. Um, And uh, uh, it got pretty dicey for a little bit, but we we managed to pull it off. Well, there goes my reluctantly supporting a Tholian overlord that they did not really like approach to diplomacy. Oh, believe me, I was wishing that was going to be the case. That we'd go over there and they'd accept us with open arms, but that, <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> Any other uh, representatives from the Typhon packed aboard, or was it just Romulans and Remans? Uh, that's that's all I found. The only other Typh- the only other uh, non-Romulan that we came across was just uh, Commander Nostream that's sitting in Ophion's brig right now. I think I'm happy where he is, although I will have to pay him a visit at some point. Thankfully, this wasn't a Breen vessel. Those troops are damned annoying to kill. Them, they somehow managed to use their Jem'Hadar cloaking fields for their unit. Well, and if it had been the Breen, I probably would have taken heavier losses because any slight nick to our suits in any way, shape, or form, and uh, it, it would have been casualties all over the place. Nasty stuff. Well, well done, Lieutenant Commander. Now i got to figure out what we're going to do with these guys. As well, Fleet Security Officer, what's your recommendation? Uh, Drake will get one of his smiles before he says something that he, he knows everyone will laugh at but not go with. Well, um, if it was me and I was in your shoes... I'd find a nice Class M planet, and I'd strand all 600 of them, and I'd rip that ship apart for spare parts. The thought had crossed my mind. But I'm you're not me, so I would say that I would keep that as a backup plan, but know that you're probably going to run into other members of the fleet that are not going to like that idea. Um, but... The Benella is a really big chunk of spare parts. It is indeed. It is indeed. 
I definitely have my eyes on that cloaking vessel, cloaking device. Um, and, uh, I, I didn't think you'd mind, but I, uh, took some of the Marines that are cross-trained, um, and, uh, sent them out to, um, help with some of the repair crews and some of the medical staff, um, to, uh, to help us get through this quicker. Um, most of them volunteered to do it on off hours, so, um, I'm keeping a watch on my guys, but they'd rather be helping than sitting in quarters in downtime. Understood. Just be aware of the, of the strains of mental stress. This is going to be a very long road, and I don't want people burning out right I I understand. Um, don't worry. We'll we'll be ready for whatever whatever comes our way. But do you want me to stay on the uh, Amalthea, or do you want me to head back to the Benella and oversee the prisoners? Head over to the Ophion real quick and get a read on our Tholian prisoner. And after that, go where you wish. Go where you believe that you need. To, where you think is. All right. I. Uh... I'll head over there. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure some of the crew will, will, uh, be happy that I'm around. But, um, on my way out, should I, uh, keep up the facade that you're in a really terrible mood and you're angry at everybody? Oh, I'm always angry at everyone. I just put on a good front. Also, if you wouldn't mind seeing where Commander Cam has stashed more of Beckett's liquor, that would be a very much appreciated. Oh, oh, that's an easy one. Uh, uh, check, uh, check the, uh, the panel behind your, uh, your flag. Uh, I, I stashed you some there. Always looking out for me, Drake. That's why I like having you around. That's, that's why I'm here, Admiral. All right, I'm going to go over to the Ophion, and, uh, I'll, I'll see what I can get from this Nostrine. This. And Drake will give a crisp salute, walk out, and as he walks out, He'll uh, he'll look at Cam as the door shuts. <sighs> I haven't seen him that mad since uh, Locke uh, teleported a uh, uh, a quantum torpedo onto his desk. Eh, it wasn't if really were, his desk, but I know what you mean. If I were you, though, uh, maybe give him a couple extra from that uh, your little uh, uh, stash. He might need it. Well, I mean, it's going to be very important for me to ration it out. I don't know when I'm going to be getting new ones now. Uh, true. Well, i got to head over to the Ophion, so I'll see if there's any left, and I'll I'll bring some with me. Good luck, uh, Lieutenant Commander. Thanks, Cam. And before we have the meeting of the mines, all the captains and the admiral, uh, we're going to briefly cut back to the Amalthea's Bridge. And uh, all of you are at your stations... And at this point, uh, Ensign Hamasi uh, speaks up, Captain Murthrin, and says, says uh, Captain, I am... I don't really know how to qualify this, uh, so I guess I'll start at the beginning. Uh, you did order the Callisto classes to stay out and act as our sort of sensor relays, and one of them, the IO, is detecting something on the edge of its sensor range. Hmm. <clears throat> ship unclear sir it's an intermittent reading i'm not sure if there's a problem with the io's sensors or if there really is a sensor ghost out there hmm tell the io to widen that search pattern a little see if it can pick up a clearer picture will do sir and at this point, uh, Rosazzo, if you could roll me a reason security, and normally the ship would assist you with sensor security, but uh, considering sensors are kind of down at the moment, um, I'm going to instead increase the difficulty to two instead of a base of one. All right, so with the two successes, uh, sort of piggybacking on the IO sensors, it's one of three things. Uh, it's either a sensor ghost, as Hamasi alluded to. It's a vessel under cloak that is leaking energy. Or it's some kind of stellar phenomena like a comet or 
some other form of ball of rock that would reflect sensor readings back at the IO. Unable to get a clearer view. Sensors indeterminate, but could be sensor ghost, but something is balancing bent sensors back. Could be uh, an yeah. efficient cloak. Uh, we do know what species live in area. Uh, uh, Ensign Hamasi uh, and Gortek will start typing on his pad and check for these type of um, radiation readings. And he'll send over um, like uh, the normal things that you look for for a Klingon or Romulan cloak. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember. I know it's it starts with a T. Is it Tachyon or Tetrion? I think it's Tachyon. Tachyon, Tachyon yeah. Um, he'll send that over. Um, uh, have the IO run a scan on looking for those specific type of particles. Uh, yeah, we'll, te uh, Tetrion particles are what you, they use in Romulan weapons. Gotcha. I knew it was a T and particles, and I couldn't remember which of the two words it was. Yeah, I think Tachyons are the time travel ones. Uh, no, that's Chronotons. Ta tachyon sweeps are what you use to sort of scan for lower tech cloaking. Techno babble, techno babble everywhere. I love it. When a uh, using multimodal reflection sorting, when a cloak ship is at warp, there are subspace variances that show up. Right. True. Right. Well, well captain, okay. to a certain value. True. Captain, if I may suggest deploying a wing of fighters out to support the IO, a they would have a much wider search. Mm. Captain, may I also yeah, so suggest be broadcasting messages of peace and first contact out all bands and frequencies? Not yet, no. They're hanging back, they don't want to, they want to, if it is a cloaked ship it wants to avoid being spotted, I don't want to risk spooking it if it's not hostile. Send the fighters out, but for now just keep an eye on the cloaking signal. Let me know if it gets, starts to try and get closer. Yes, sir. Sending to, sending scramble orders now. All right. So, while that's all going on and taking time, we're going to have the meeting between all the captains. So, uh, I believe, Locke, you're going to be taking Captain Sim, and I'll introduce Sim since she and uh, Captain Tuzon are new. Uh, so, Captain Sim is the Cameloid captain of the Red November, and Captain Tuzon is the captain of the Mei Yuan, and he is a Bajoran. And I believe, uh, Prier, you're playing Tuzon. Yep. All right. So, uh, everybody else, you play your own characters. And yeah, Skull, you have everyone at this table. Well, it's been a very busy couple of days, folks. Uh, but it looks like the worst is over, so commendations to all of you and your crews for seeing us through this. Now we just have to pick up the pieces. Merthrin, um, you sent me a, over a pad of fleet deployment suggestions, and I believe those are pretty much what I was thinking of. Um, C Captain Beckett, once, we've, once we're out here, you're going exploring. Sounds good. Uh, that's what the little sister was made to do. As for everyone else, status reports. The well, the Amalthea. Oh, please. You, you well, the Amalthea's sensors are completely shot. It's going to take a month, if not a month and a half, to get functional again. For the time, for the foreseeable future, we are flying blind. That's annoying, but at least we have a we have several wings of fighters and the uh, and the uh, Callistos that would provide a decent sensor net just in case. Yes, we're very definitely going to have to rely on the rest of the fleet to scout ahead for us. Uh, Panek, what about the Ophion? The Ophion structural integrity is is quite damaged, Captain. The, we are unable to engage multi-vector assault mode and or establish high warp. Tactically speaking, we currently are well armed, but that's just about it. Our engine took some damage, but that's the least of our worries. It's going to take quite some time to repair the structural damage. Beckett, the Lysithia? Um, computer's a little rattled. Um, 
and uh, but other than that, we were were pretty good. Um, engines took a took a pretty good beating, but um, we can still we can still move, we can still fight, and we can still learn stuff. And Captain Tuzon, what about the May you want? Other than our communication systems completely being shot, the rest of the ship is fully operational. That's a bit distressing. I'm very hesitant to send you out without a functioning communication system. Do you have an ETA on a... Um, we're working as fast as we can. If we had a spare communications array around here, it would definitely help smooth things along. Yeah, we could we could probably convert the part parts from the station for that. I think it's probably high priority that we have the entire fleet able to communicate with itself. Agreed. I'm deploying Nora Roberts to your ship, Tuzon, under your command until this is fixed. Uh, use her as you. Thank you, sir. And Captain Sim, the Red November. Well. The weapons are damaged, but quite functional. If needed, we can actually uh, stand up and take a few hits and give it back. Maybe, hopefully not. Hopefully it should be a couple days before it's up and working, but doable. Not completely ineffectual. Hmm. I see. It's... It's unfortunate okay. that it's the weapons. It's the one thing the good ship is good at is firing, but with the limited crew, mostly from holograms, we didn't suffer any major casualties. Glad to hear it. Do you need uh, bodies from any? Do you need bodies from any of the other ships? No, thankfully we'll just activate a few emergency engineering holograms. The ship is quite good for that sort of purpose, and since the engines and warp reactor are not damaged, we have ample power to just channel everything and. How it would take power away from the weapons and put them into bodies. Splendid. I'm pairing uh, Red November and the Ophion together um, to do a little uh, shallow reconnoitering of the sis of nearby systems. Uh, Captain Beckett, if you could please pass some tantalizing systems to them. Uh, yeah, not a problem, Admiral. Um, Pylong is. Uh, huh. Well, she's doing what High Long does, and she's mapping everything that we can get her, we can look at. So, I will, uh, I'll pass it on as soon as she gets me a, a nice big fish. So, when ironically, you actually get a combat right at that moment, and uh, it's uh, Master Chief High Long to Captain Beckett. Uh, Beckett will kind of look around the room, and hit his combat. High Long as as. As ever, your timing is impeccable. Uh, yes, I, I hate to interrupt the captain and admiralty meeting, but I'm actually outside with a data pad if you would care for me to come in. Oh, I, I'll make, uh, I'll absolutely. make the go-ahead. <laughs> right. So, door opens, and uh, in steps Master Chief High Long, and she kind of nods to everyone in turn and says, uh, Thank you, captains and admiral, for letting me in. Uh, I just had a sort of discovery that I think will help us in the future. And uh, she walks over to the screen behind you, Beckett, and she uploads an image to it. And on the hollow display, you see a binary star system that has a class T gas giant. So the really, really big gas giants. And then what appears to be a single class M world. And Hylong explains, I, of course, we're going to need to get closer to learn anything significant, but uh, based on the Lysithia sensors alone, I'm able to detect that this is the nearest system uh, to us at the current moment. It's about nine hours away at maximum warp, or about 27 hours at warp seven. Uh, this Class M world does appear to be a water world, which means there's only small islands. Uh, beyond that, there's another system about 10 light years out, but considering the closeness of this one, I wanted to bring your attention uh, as soon as I could. Um, water as in actual H2O, or water that we can purify? That, we'd have to get closer to find out. 
and Beckett will turn around to Skull. Seems like a good place for me to start. Admiral, if Seems I may. Like it. Yes. The logical uh, course of action here would be to expand our search beyond simply looking at Class M planets. The other uh, various types of planetoids would be immensely more helpful here as they would be rich in materials we would need. Agreed. We're not looking for life at the moment, even though that is Starfleet's primary mission. Right now, anything that looks good, Class Y, Class y planets, uh, Class J moons, any asteroids with any sort of nickel or metal content, I'll take uh, you cut out at the end there. Um, asteroids with any nickel or metal content, I'll take whatever you can get me. Well, we do have to think ahead, Captain. And an organic moon with the water world might have plenty of algae. We can scoop that up. The organic matter will be useful for replicating food in the, me for the foreseeable future. We need to consider what we're going to eat in a month or two. Agreed. If only we had a certain Talaxian chef. We are kicking no, that there one is, to you, Admiral. Yeah, uh, there is one other point of order we should address, Admiral. Uh, yes, what, yes. What to do with the Romulans? Now, personally, I'm not a fan of holding 600 Romulans in Briggs for the next 10 years, at a minimum. But, as, as you know, they are not exactly... Uh, happy with us at the moment, shall we say. So, ideally, what I'd like to do is lay the situation out for them, essentially give them a work with us or we leave you here ultimatum, and give them a chance to play ball and work with us to get home. Agreed. As much as I would like to talk if this was a fun fully functional fleet and we had a starbase, we could transfer them to a starbase and they would fall under prisoners of war uh, treatment. However, we're not at starbase. Uh, we should set up a... We should hold their command staff accountable for their actions. I would suggest a trial. Um, we must have a JAG on board somewhere. So, at this, Hylong's still in the room, though, you know, it's kind of that awkward she hasn't been dismissed yet, but she does politely yeah, cough to get everyone's attention. Master Chief? Yes. Uh, permission to speak fre freely, sirs. Looks to the Admiral. Go ahead. Uh, Admiral, while I commend you on upholding the Federation Code of Justice, I think that the rest of the fleet might not see it that way. Uh, I, I think it's a foregone conclusion that any trial that is held for the commanding officers of the Vanilla is pretty much just going to be confirming that they're guilty. I, I don't see anyone stepping up to their defense in this fleet. Indeed. I would have to agree. The task seems wholly irrelevant at this point. Yeah, I'd, I'd much rather to uh, handle the trial if we manage to get them back when uh, emotions are not quite so highly strung and the weight of being stranded decades from home isn't all over everyone's heads. Um, conversely, some of the lower-ranking Romulans might be a little upset about being ten years away from home. If there is a jury... And half of it is, say, Romulan crew members, lower-ranking Romulan crew members. That might give it a sense of legitimacy, while also mm -hmm. giving them a, them a chance to feel <laughs> part of the crew. Yeah. Mm. Either, either way, a trial would be more about the show of it rather than any real action, case of justice being carried out. Well, then if we're doing a trial for show, then there's no reason to do a trial. Agreed. Very well. We'll table the trial until we can get back to Federation space. Speaking In the of meantime, which, Admiral, uh, yes, Panek. Pardon my interruption. However, my CEO has come up with a haphazard, I would say, plan in which to get in contact with the Federation again. He oh. would. He has a tentative schematic for using the Benzite 
used in QSD travel within a shuttle. I'll All just right. slot, give you the pad. I'll take it. I'm. S I applaud your. Um, I applaud Locke's initiative, but we've only been in the Gamma Quadrant for four days, and he's already looking to build a Gamma Flyer. I do not believe he's given that that name. However, I will suggest that to him if you give would like him that. time. I'll. Sl it looks good. Um, you may proceed. Um, we have several shuttles on board the Amalthea that you. Locke has his choice. However, I am unsure as to whether should we. Let me rephrase that. Should we uh, establish contact with the Federation again? It will not be for quite some time that we hear from them consistently. Should, and uh, we would have to inform them of the current status of the Romulans. Yes, I yes. suspect that will happen w if this uh, sh QSD shuttlecraft, and I make a point not to say Gamma Flyer, um, makes it to the wormhole if the wormhole is operational and if we can deliver our report. I mean, that is the other thing to consider, uh, as Starfleet isn't expecting to hear from us any time in the near future anyway. For all they know, we've arrived safely at the other end of the wormhole and are beginning our mission. Hmm. So Still, I'm on if... coughs again. <laughs> Sorry, sirs. I, I really... It, would you mind if I sat down? Uh, 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 go Chief ahead. Um, Mirthron yeah. officer. Uh, yeah, Black Chief... raises an eyebrow. Uh, Hey, at this point, and Beckett will say it. At this point, Chief, you're you're pretty much the highest ranking NCO here. So if somebody's going to have a voice for the, I don't want to use the term regular crew, but not captaincy, not officers. The, I get what you mean. You're going to be the best person to give us that voice. Well, uh, based on what I'm hearing. Um, I, I I think I need to get with uh, Lieutenant Commander Locke and just help him design the QSD shuttle, which we're going to have to come up with a better name for, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, the reason I, I'd like to speak up is because I, I'm curious what our plans are for repairing the fleet. I, I know that we want to obviously affect repairs, but I'm just wondering if there's any ships that are going to be given priority. I believe at the moment the top priority will be getting the May 1's communications array back up so that they can actually operate separate from the fleet if need be. Following that... Follow... Uh, according... To, sorry, I'm going to pull up a pad I have. Um, so... I'll, I'll have to interject and disagree here, Captain. Or Admiral. And Captain. The May 1, though currently deafened and muted, still has working phasers and a structure that will stand up to an attack. And her current position is to stay with it with the Amalthea. So her comms are not necessarily needed right now. The Ophion, however... Yes? I, I thought you were done. Go ahead and finish. The Ophion cannot maintain high warp or hold its own in a, in a firefight. I would ask that you promote the Ophion to higher priority. It does seem unfortunate well, that our big gunship cannot take a hit. Uh, if if I may, uh, I would have to agree with Panek. Um, we the Maywan can use one of the um, Callistos if nothing else, as a spotter. Um, or the um, Amalthea itself, using one of the Callistos as a relay. Um, having a, one of our most potent fighting weapons in a shape that can't even get into warp is not going to help any of us. You are a, you guys are lucky that uh, Gene, Ro Gene Roberts, our fleet engineer, agrees with you. Uh, Panek, the Ophion is to receive top priority on the repairs. After that, after it that, will be... It ah, sorry. After that, it will be uh, Tucson. It'll be your ship with its communication systems. Finally, we'll work on the Amalthea sensors and then bring the rest of the fleet up to ship shape, as it were. 
Assuming we can find a planet with enough raw materials to handle things. There, we are making a lot of assumptions, but that's what we have to do at the moment. Mm. Well, uh, crazy so, thoughts. So, for, oh, go ahead, Captain. Uh, sorry, sorry Tuzon. I uh, hope, uh, hope you're okay with communicating in the semaphore for the near future. We will make do. Just practice your uh, charades, Captain. And uh, Hylon sort of waits for a lull in the conversation and says, I I have a crazy thought, uh, everyone. I, I, it just occurred to me, but we do have a Class 2 station in the Amalthea cargo bays, yes? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and this is just me spitballing here, but if we were able to reconfigure... And she, she hesitates, trying to figure out how to say this properly. I don't want to get anyone's hopes up, but we might be able to build our own sort of Midas array. Hmm. Well, I mean, I you, brought that. you have all the specs for one, because the Lysithia is currently carrying one. Right, but this would be something that would involve using all the parts, and that's kind of the issue, is hmm. if we use... Any, any of the parts to repair the Ophion, we won't be able to make this array, and I guess it's worth saying that this array wouldn't be something we could take with us. This would be very much a, a stationary installation. Is it, is it, is it something you think you can make out of um, sensor probes or comms relays like we did in Andromeda? Uh, maybe. The difference here is that the Midas array was initially designed as for the Delta Quadrant. The only reason it worked for us in the Andromeda Galaxy was because uh, real-time communication through the wormhole, or not through the wormhole, sorry, uh, through Pandora's Gate wasn't outside normal subspace traffic, if that makes any sense. Um, in order to communicate this far out into the Gamma Quadrant, I I would need to use everything in the cargo bay. I think. So the question then becomes: Which is more important to us, getting the fleet up, getting the fleet combat ready as quickly as possible, or letting Starfleet know our situation as quickly as possible? Uh, call me biased, but I'm all for the fleet becoming operational before we let Starfleet know. I mean, Starfleet's going to be there. And they'll continue to function as normal. Uh -huh. Just they'll uh, assume uh, that we're assu missing an action. Assuming they haven't declared war on the Romulan Empire over a uh, warbird following us into the wormhole. Yes, you'd think that after all these incidents, Deep Space Nine would have put up some sort of anti proton field around the. Uh... Well, well. I uh, I would be doing my chief engineer a discredit if I didn't suggest so, or bring something up that he would he brought up, and that is, unless we're going to add another ship to the fleet, we do have a very large green vessel sitting in between all of our ships right now that could also be used as spare parts, maybe. Uh, yes, several engineers, engineers from several vessels have suggested that we just cannibalize the Benali for parts. And it is definitely an option I'm considering, but I need to talk to the crew and figure out where we are with them. I'm not going to lie, the idea of having another ship in the fleet has potential tactical and um, nah, logistical benefits in the long run, even though it hampers us short term. But having 600 potential hostiles on board does tend to color my decision making if we find them amongst the ships that is significantly less 50 here 50 there a couple hundred on the amalthea some of the amal some of the amalthea's surplus crew transferring on to the dideradex even well then we'd have to come up with the fact of um we'd have to well Repair get a, and get a prize crew put together i mean unless and beckett will turn to skull with a with a smirk, unless you're uh, going to be giving the Banala to your wife as a dowry. I love well, to chuckle at that, very noticeably. I would be I remiss if I did not say something. 
You were all expecting the Romulans to be agreeable and trustworthy here. If we are just well, I don't know about as ship, far as to say trustworthy. These, even the lower rank crewmen, are were completely aware of what their mission was. They intended to cl collapse a wormhole with themselves inside of it. I would not bank on them being desperate enough to get back home to work with us. So we give them a choice. We give them a choice of remaining on their ship and being stranded 30 years from home without warp, or having their ship cannibalized and joining us in the brig for the foreseeable future. I have a thought on I really this, need... I think. I... How do I want to say this without seeming speciesist? Uh... Romulans can survive on many different types of worlds. Would it be better not to find them a suitable planet to set them down on? I mean, I'm no doctor, but... And she turns to Beckett. I'm pretty sure between 600 people, they wouldn't have a problem forming a working colony. It would solve a lot of problems. I say we give them the choice. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, three options. Work work with us to get home, uh, spend 10 years in our brigs, put them down on a planet with enough supplies to create a self-sustaining colony. Yes, but here's the question. Where are you going to get those supplies? I mean, granted, we can raid... And, and by the way, no, Beckett, but, Beckett, look, Beckett looks a little bit irritated. Um, we we can raid the Benella's food supplies, but where are we going to get things for them to make shelters or things of that nature? Granted, granted. I don't. Well, like, I was intending like... to let them, is it essentially use what supplies they have on the Benella to start that off, and then we have a bare ship that we can strip down for superstructure parts. So real quick, before we go any further, let's actually start uh, filling out the supply list. Um, so initially, and apparently it's not on here, so I'll add it. Um, you guys have four spare industrial replicators, which one of those could conceivably um, sustain a colony. Um, you need at least two industrial replicators working in order to completely fabricate this class two station, just so you know. Yeah. And then real quick, because it could come up, um, let's go ahead and define what the Lysithia has in terms of special cargo, and then the Ophion in terms of special log, uh, special cargo. So uh, Beckett, since she, the Lysithia is your ship, uh, what would you say would be of note in the cargo bay? Um, an overabundance of medical supplies. Okay, lots of medical supplies. Uh, let's put a cap on, let's say, two years worth of medical supplies. Sounds good. Um, and the reason for that is because of the mission that the Lysithia has been doing during the Borg invasion. Okay. Um, I, and, and we're taking all of this, I mean, and I mean this for every ship, that we have enough parts to repair the ship a couple of times. So, like, the normal... Um, spare parts, basically, is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, I would actually like you to yeah. roll me... Uh, roll me 1d4, please, Beckett. And we will see how many breaches you can repair with your spare supplies. Alright, huh. you can repair one breach. So I'm fucked. Yeah. Pardon my language, chat. No, you're fine. Um, and then real quick, because I know it's a thing that you do in Lysithia, um, how much of uh, your still supplies do you have? Uh, asking the real good questions right now. Yeah. Very Man, important. the tough questions. Uh, uh, remember, this will be our alcohol supply for the next decade. Right. So we've got 10 years worth of alcohol supplies. <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say... Uh, uh, I mean, we didn't know how long we were going to be out here, and plus, Beckett's been known to pick up supplies as he can. Mm -hmm. So, I'd say, I don't know, maybe a year's worth of making what he can already make. All right, so one year's worth of uh, I mean, alcohol. Uh, brewery, that's the word I want. Brewery uh, necessities. Okay. 
And um, I think any other like weird major spare par or weird major parts is maybe knowing Matic um, spare parts for the uh, cilia, the cloaking device, and also spare parts for the Midas pod. Okay, and I will say that those spare parts uh, will say are um, not really configurable for a breach without a check. Uh, so spare Sounds good. Parts... Like the generic wear and tear parts, not actually like a full second, you know, unit. Gotcha. Uh, roll me a D50, please. Wow. Wow. I mean, these are great rolls for Star Trek Adventures, but not for this. Um, I hate I'm, this algorithm. I'm going to give you a plus 15 on that, so 17 spare parts, just so we have a number. All right. Uh, let's go to the Ophion. So, Ophion, I'd like, uh, let's say, Panek. The Ophion, I think it's fair to say, uh, you have, uh, you know, colored history of the Ophion. You've taken a lot of breaches in your past, so you probably are carrying a lot of spare supplies when it comes to fixing breaches. Uh, especially since we have three parts, three different modules to fix. Right. So I'd also I... say we have extra resources for repairing EPS conduits, since we have a huge power draw. Yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's suss that out. So I would like you to roll me a 1d12, and then we'll, we will add 6 to that. Okay, so you uh, apparently thought ahead. So you have 13 breaches worth of Only repair logical, supplies. Only logical, of course. Yeah. Well, and because your uh, your uh, chief engineer is a scrounger. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll say you will get one more special item with that many worth of repair supplies. You get one more special item in your cargo. Uh, I'd say we have extra armaments. Uh, and, uh, an extra amount of uh, torpedoes, a few quantum torpedoes maybe uh, thrown in. And let's not worry about the, the torpedoes because I don't want to pull a Voyager and shoot like 50 more than we actually have. So let me float it this way. Um, I didn't initially put the Benamite on there, so let me add the Benamite to your sheet as well. So you have enough ben Benamite for approximately... I can math today of QSD. Okay. So, uh, as long as no one else was editing the sheet, uh, if you guys relook at the supplies list, that should be everything. So yeah, sorry to interrupt the meeting, but I figured before we started worrying about specifics, we wanted to get that sussed out. The Ophian's amount of um, breaches with the repair supplies should. You yeah, the Ophian would damage. be able. Yeah, Ophian would be able to cover its repairs. Okay. Um, um, and what about the uh, November? Uh, the November will say has medical supplies, but it's mostly empty space. Okay. So that's why they're not on here. Ready. So, and I guess I'll put it up so the stream can see what we're we're talking about here. So I guess next point of order will be go over to the warbird and see what the Romulan crew think of all this. Um, I would suggest Admiral, if you were going over to the uh, uh, over to the Benella to take a heavier marine presence with you. Drake will not let me leave this ship without at least two escort. That's kind of how I am w between Ty and Svarja. I'm not allowed to leave unless one of them's with me. Hence why Svarja's outside. <laughs> that makes and sense. Probably if you, and probably if you're from Yamalthir as well, since Mothrin's going to come over as well. In the meantime, I do not... Whatever we decide on the Romulans, I do not trust their cloaking device, and would rather claim it as a spoil of war rather than letting the Romulans have it if we decide to let them out. Oh yes, no, they are I'm, they are getting their cloaking device privileges revoked anyway. Yeah, well, that makes me happy, and I'm I'm sure it's going to make uh, uh, Captain Sim happy with uh, both of us having cloaking devices. Indeed, I'm. It's pr it's actually 
it's not a powerful enough device to prop to deal with the Amalthea, but the Ophion or the Mei Yuan would it would probably suit one of them rather well. But we'll tack that onto a list of things to do after we're up and running. In the meantime, um, I'll I'll ask Vetu to assist your engineers in looking at systems and seeing what we can do. The, the, it strikes me as interesting that the Romulans were attempting to escape right after vanquishing us. I can't help but wonder if perhaps they've improved their device in a similar fashion to what we've done with QSD. Mm. Now, so if we could reverse engineer the technology to the point that it could shorten the trip, that would definitely be useful. Uh... On that note, would you mind if I came over as well, sirs? I would relish the chance to look at their engine design. No um, objections, I, yeah, no. I don't have any objections. I'll, uh, I don't believe you've uh, actually met Vetu yet, High Long, so I suspect the two of you will work rather well together. Um, I, I do have uh, a problem with it. As long as we are not being sent out, because I am not leaving with, without my chief of sciences, nor my best stellar cartographer. That's a good point. Uh, Hi, Long. Our for your the Lysithia's first mission is due to start as soon as Beckett leaves, and if he wants you on his ship, you're on his ship. But I I will ask that someone brings us, uh, or gets us a copy of the engine specs. And I will have, um, I'm sure Hai Long will love to go over it and maybe have ideas for whoever is going to take a look at it. Hai Long has no complaints with this. All right. Unless there's anything else, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Very well. Uh, dismissed. Uh, Captain Beckett, a quick word, please. Uh, of course. And he'll look to Hai Long. Um, just let Svarja know that I'm not dead, and he'll say it with a smile. I mean, she assumes that every time you're out of sight. It's kind of cute, actually. Yeah, I know. Oh. All right. So, uh, if I heard correctly, everyone besides Beckett and Skull filter on out. I like to be waiting outside for Beckett when he leaves. Okay, noted. Uh, Beckett. Well you look quite fetching in uh cat in captain's red how'd i know you were gonna bring that up actually it's not the way you intended um i've given what we've been through i have bigger problems than trying to force adjust you to a role or a mindset that you might not 100 percent be suited for thus i rescind my heavily implied order that you wear captain's red if you're more comfortable in blue and as long as you wear the four pips and identify yourself as a captain I'm fine with it <clears throat> you know I had the tailors make a red suit just <sighs> no uh, whichever you would like admiral I, I told you this before on my ship I'll wear what I want I'm on your ship. Technically Mirthrins, but it's your ship. This is where your flag's at. If you want me in reds for meetings, I'll be in reds for meetings. Very well. You just have that option if you want it. Good date and good exploring. Uh, we will we will find us what we need to find. Alright. So, Beckett, when you step outside, uh, waiting for you is Panek. Oh, uh, Panek? A word? Of course. Uh, you want to have this word while we walk to the uh, transporters? Certainly. What's on your mind? Some advice, Captain. While I was appreciative of your Master Chief and her suggestions, your remark as to her being the voice of the non-commissioned I'd like to remind you that as captain at these functions, it is your role to know the voice and intent of your crew regardless of their rank. I understand that. 
but we also have a lot more people underneath each one of us. And I don't know about you. Well, my crew probably likes me better than they like you. But they're not going to tell you everything you want to know. Or they're not going to tell you everything they want to say. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. So sometimes having a, another person give their opinion is better than just thinking you know all the answers. I was not implying such a thing, but rather that you come knowing what their intention, intention is. Whether you meet with them and they explain this to you and give them give your, their insights to you, and you bring it to us. It makes you look weak, Captain, as if you don't know what you're doing. Hmm. Interesting. Especially from someone who got their pips after I did. You know, I Ooh, tried to come shade. here and I have backed up a lot of what you've said, even though I don't 100% agree with it. If there are discrepancies that you must point out, please, I am open to criticism. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sure you're open to it, but let's put it this way. Keep your opinions on your ship and I'll keep mine on mine. I am only trying to make sure that your fleet functions efficiently, Captain. If your morale of your your ship is most certainly your regard, I was giving friendly advice. Well, it didn't come off that way, so maybe you need to learn I how. I apologize for my Vulcan demeanor. It's not your Vulcan demeanor that I'm worried about. It's the words that come out of your mouth. <laughs> I'd forgotten how little these two get on. Yeah, it's kind of I'm, I'm laughing here off mic, but. It's interesting tension. I love it. All right. So uh, before we actually cut to uh, the delegation that is at the uh, Romulans, I actually am going to cut back to the Amalthea Bridge as uh, uh, words hard. Uh, Captain. Uh, also, do we want to take the break before or after the meeting on the Romulan ship? Uh, we're going to do it right before. So cool. right after so the right. scene. All right. So, Captain Merthrin, you walk back onto the bridge, and uh, Ensign Hamasi uh, kind of catches, you know, waves you on over to her and says, uh, and says Sir, uh, I ran the scans you indicated. Or, no, sorry, that was Gorteg. Uh, so, she's run this by you already, Gorteg. And she says to the captain, uh, I ran the scans that Commander Gorteg suggested, sir, and I found something very interesting. I, I don't know how to respond. Uh, here, and she hands you a pad. And uh, Rosazo, uh, being security, you would be privy to this information already. But, Merthrin, you're looking at what appears to be a Burrell bird of prey that is currently cloaked and is basically trying its best to dodge the Io and the fighter weight. Um, sort of, so you go... Oh, if the, as if this day couldn't get any more complicated. This is um, actually hang on, hang on a second. Um, um oh, well, yeah, just trying to work out if Starship Expert can help me here. So, basically, what I'm wanting yeah. to do is look at the information and go. Okay, did this thing come through the wormhole with us, or was this here already? I will need you to roll me a insight and let's say con, because I think that's literally what con is meant to do. Uh, difficulty here will be a two. All right, so that was con and insight, insight was it? Yeah. Yep. And I don't think we... Oh, yeah, we've just been doing meetings all day, so we don't have any momentum. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. And the all difficulty right. is a two. You do I'll not think he's exited the wormhole. I'll spend a threat to get a, thir a third die. Okay. If it will let me select. Yeah, drop-down menus being a bit sluggish. Uh, 
data path analysis, alien technology. I don't think uh, either of those could apply. I, I would say one of those would apply, yes. Yeah, oh, Bertha, man. you have no idea. Ooh. Man. Oh, at least it wasn't a complication. Yeah, that's the key yeah, thing. It wasn't a complication. Hmm. Well, they don't want to be spotted. Keep an eye on them. If they, tr if they move to follow either the Lysithia or the Ophion, and Ophion Red November when they head out... Hail, hail, hail them and challenge them. Otherwise, leave them be for now. I do not want a spooked Klingon warship added into this mess. Of course, Captain. And uh, I, uh, I will see what I can do about seeing if I can figure out who it is. Uh, in the mean, in the meantime, tell the uh, uh, tell the Callistos and the fighters to grab up on their. Burrell, Burrell fighter tactics. All right. So it's at this point that we will take our 10, you know, let's do a five minute break because we have a lot to still cover. So let's do a five minute break. Uh, if you guys could be back then. And remember, I do leave the stream running. Just I mute myself. But yeah, BRB in about five minutes. All right, I'm back, and uh, just for anyone watching on Twitch or on YouTube, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, just as a reminder, if you have Amazon Prime, you also get Twitch Prime for free. And Twitch Prime, if you don't already use it, is a free sub to any channel of your choice. You get to pick it every month so you can spread that love around. And I'd love it if you use it on me, but if not, I completely understand. Also, as I said at the top of the session, uh, if you are interested in my mission compendiums, I just put out a new one, and I also am looking to make another one in March, and there should be a straw poll on my Twitter for that purpose. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, just kind of waiting on these guys to come on back. I'm back. Welcome back. Back as well. I'm also here. Same here. All right, so I think the only ones we're waiting on are uh, Gorteg, and I just saw Free Pack right up. Or Fry Pack. I'll mm -hmm. get it right eventually. Um, it's it, free pop. It, it, if, if that Burrell attacks before Mercerin gets a chance to 
let anyone else know. He's probably going to get get some dirty looks. Who knows? Well, uh, why don't we wait? Because uh, we do have another minute. So just Not to conf- just to confirm, uh, who is going over to the Romulans? So obviously, Skull, you said you were going. And Mithrin is as well. Okay, Mithrin, you're going as well. Uh, who else is going to talk to the Romulans? Uh, we bringing Vetu. Mm, she'll be around, but I don't know if she'll. I don't know if I want to introduce her to them right now. That's a good point. Yeah. I imagine Vetu would probably be able to tell you better than us whether that would be a bad idea. So yeah. right now I have Skull and I have Mirthrin. Is anyone else going um, to... Uh, probably uh, Drake. Drake, yeah. okay. A decent contingent of troops, of course, but then we've got we've got security personnel all over the Dederodex, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's, it's not something you really have to worry about. Um, you will be under guard, but uh, who knows? I think this will be an interesting scene. Do, do we want to bring Free Pack with us? I figure he's already in the engine room. Because if there's one person I trust to outmaneuver a Romulan, it's a Ferengi. I could be in their engine room, their engine room, where you want me. Somewhere Actually, in a catacomb. A <laughs> Ferengi's sense of sworn hoggling, or whatever the term is, horn swoggling? No. Whatever. I know Sense what motive mean. checks would be good for with a oh, Ferengi. Yeah. Yeah. But between him and Mirthrin's empath, empathy, I'm, I'm hoping we'll get an accurate picture of how cooperative they'll be. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. Alright, so I have four out of six people represented. Uh, Prier and Locke, who would you like to bring to this scene? Just so that you okay. have a voice if need be. Rosazo will come along, just to kind of Security in case. Okay. Okay. Uh, Prayer can come along just in case medical needs that people need attention. Okay. Sure. And Prayer. Alrighty. Running out of room to put tokens. I love it. All right. So uh, with you six uh, ready to beam over, uh, I'm curious as to any armaments that you're taking. Are you just relying on your security guards, or are you two going to be armed? Um, standard phasers, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. Has, has, a, has a type one phaser, but I'm also bringing along um, an engineering tricorder and an engineering cool kit and a hyperspanner. And none of those cost me uh, opportunity because I'm an engineer. Okay, noted. All right. So oh, um, also, I would like to bring an updated, detailed list of the um, of the enemy ship's current uh, damage assessment. Okay. Because right. rule 87 of the rule, rules of acquisition says learn the customer's weakness so that you can better take advantage of them. It's a very good rule. All right. So uh, the six of you and your little security contingent beam on over. And would you be beaming to the Romulans engineering, the bridge, somewhere else? Well, probably wherever we're keeping the main bridge crew, I'd imagine. Yeah. Probably on the bridge then. All right. So obviously your crew, your existing Marines are holding the bridge. Uh, the Romulan that is in charge, since you have Nostreen in your brig, uh, is sub commander of Ralmok, who I will put his token on the map. Uh, sub commander of uh, Ralmok is present on the bridge when you beam in. Uh, he's silent. He's sort of s- sitting at a chair with Marines on either side of him. And as you guys beam in, he kind of looks over at you and scoffs, but says nothing. Subcommander Sub- Vrolmok, I am Admiral Barton Skull, and I have not had a very good day. So, uh, in case you haven't figured it out yet, you and your crew are currently prisoners of war. On due to your acts of aggression against my ship and fleet. 
he raises a very Romulan eyebrow and says, Act of War. So you mean to tell me that getting revenge for that one, and he points a very angry shaking finger at Mirthred, for that one killing countless thousands of lives, you don't find that an Act of War. And Mirthred will sort of like close his eyes, take a long breath, I was wondering when this would come back to bite me. It, it would it would seem that you obviously have a deep-seated grudge. Tell me, did you lose someone? Yes, I lost my wife. For what little it's worth, you have my condolences. Hmm. While all this... Well, Freebach has walked over to a console, ignoring their little tiff, and is interfacing with it to get data. Okay. okay. Re regardless of what happened, I do a show or a theater show of counting imaginary numbers on my hand. Ima five years ago, I know the phrase "revenge is a dish best served cold," but your, but regard irregardless of that. Now is the time. Now is presence, or now is present, and your ship engaged us, and potentially stopped us from getting home. In case no one's actually told you, now Vromlack, Vromlack, we are at least thirty. Uh, we're at least twenty years from the wormhole, assuming it's still there. Fifty, if we take the long way around. And qu quite frankly, I'm ill-advised to just let you on your way. So, we pretty much have three options before us. The first is we keep you in our brigs for that amount of time. I can't imagine that being all that entertaining. And we salvage your vessel for parts to keep to repair our ailing fleet. Option two, um, those of those of you who wish to serve with us as enlisted personnel are more than willing to do so. We will welcome them as we will any other Starfleet uh, personnel. They can contribute their expertise and with their aid, hopefully we'll get home faster. Option three is we leave you on a planet somewhere, give you enough uh, supplies to start a small colony, and when we make it back to space, or explored space will tell the Romulans where you have set up a outpost of R the Romulan Star Empire. So before I respond, uh, Free Pack, I'd like you to roll me an Insight Engineering, please. Difficulty 2. And if you have a computer's focus of any type, this would apply. I have Metallurgy, EPS, Diagnostics, Emergency Repair, Warport Mechanics, and Trigger. Uh, let's say that uh, your EPS focus will apply here. That was Insight and Engineering? Correct. Difficulty 2. So, Freepak, you're going to notice two very important things as you start to pour over the systems. The first is that the quantum singularity that powers pretty much every Romulan vessel because remember, they don't use a warp core. They quite literally use a miniature black hole to power their ship. Uh, it is in danger of expiring. And by that I mean it is not being fed anything to sustain it. And that is because obviously the damage to the engines and damage to the power systems prevents it from... prevents the engine from being fed, if that makes any sense. Um, the most important thing about that is that once the singularity shuts down, it's pretty much gone for good. Like the only thing that can get it back up and create a new singularity is a starbase or a start dock. So if this thing goes, it's gone. Um, the next thing you're going to notice is that there is a strange subroutine that is ticking down and there's about 30 seconds left before it executes something. You don't know what, but it has a 30 second timer. Uh, is there no way to make a roll to determine what it is? I would say you either have time to figure out what it is and then it will happen, 
or you can immediately attempt to try and disable it no matter what it is. Like, it's 30 seconds, so you, you kind of have to choose one or the other. I'm uh, afraid you're paranoid. He's going to... Oh, huh? Oh, what is this? What is this? Uh, Captain, there's there's a, an on uh, I'm going to attempt to shut it down. So we've got 30 seconds left. All right. I need All you right. to do I'm... me a daring We're... engineering. Uh, the difficulty when... here... Uh, after I spend some threat, will be some. Will be a. Uh, let's do a four. Oh my god! Um, when when he says that it's counting down, and I'm trying to whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Beckett's going to reach over. Beckett. Drake is going to reach over to Skull and Murthren's communicators, mm -hmm. and uh, this is what we call a throwback. And we'll and double, tap double tap them to okay. get them both immediately transported out. Sneaky, sneaky. All right, so Skull and Mirtha. But good man, Drake. Yeah, you immediately beam out uh, to safety. Um, and uh, uh, Drake will run over to Prayer. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so no, Drake, I'll say that to get Mirtha and Skull, that is your action. Okay. Uh, however, Rizazo and Prayer, you now each get an action. I'm gonna look at some commander of Brolmac and look as you know raise myself up on my silly egg and a grumble as loud as it is. What is the nature of the subroutine? <laughs> Alright. Uh I'd like you to roll me a presence security, please. Difficulty three. Swear to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good here. I'm gonna buy a dice with uh with by buying threat. Okay. Don't think. Yeah, doubt I have a focus, but yeah. Yeah. Uh. No. So unfortunately, uh, Rolmac just laughs, and for a reason that will become apparent soon. Uh, what was Prier, actually what was the difficulty I was aiming for? Yeah. Uh, Prier, Uh, let's do you real quick. What would you That's like? That's actually. To do? Uh, was it a difficulty? Uh, was it a four or three? Uh, no, it was three. I'm going to actually re-roll one of those dice because I bought one with threat, so I can re-roll it. Oh, you well, have bold security. Sorry. I do have bold security. Mm -hmm. Completely overlook that. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no. Oh, oh dear. dear. Oh. Well. Uh, oh. So he doesn't just chuckle. He laughs in your not face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's that's going to be interesting. Um, now, Prier, now what would you like to do? I'll tap my communicator and try to beam out. Okay, so you beam out, no problem. You so, now you can call for multiple beams out at once, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of leaving us here. <laughs> All right, so a few things are going to happen at the same time. So I'm just going to start with one and just imagine this all happening at the same time. So first, Rolmac laughs, and he says, I have a fourth option. It's a pity that the Admiral won't be able to see it. And free pack, the console begins to overload uh, in front of you, and I need you to make me a fitness and security roll at a difficulty of two, and this is to represent you getting out of the way of this incoming explosion. Oh my god, you picked my worst one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to uh, cite the Ferengi rule of acquisition. Uh, duck, death is tall. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that, that would let you use your determination. I mean, I don't have that as a value, but oh. I wish I put it in now. Yeah, oh, I wait, was going to say, uh, if it was a value, I would let you have it. Oh, oh, I, I have one. You can't make a deal if you're dead. That's my, my value. Okay, nice. yeah, okay. sure. All right, so I guess, uh, I guess you're just rolling to not get a complication and to get momentum. Hey, it's a point of momentum. It's something. Better than we've been all session. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Free Pack, you dive out of the way as the console you were just out overloads and explodes in a shower of sparks. And then there is the voice of the Romulan computer. Uh, and it says, Attention, all Tal Shiar operatives, please engage Protocol Omega. And Vralmak, uh, Drake, you see in front of you, uh, Vrolmak, kind of similar to the what happened on uh, in Captain America, where uh, when Captain America, t uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. 
Uh, the one who shot the doctor and they did that whole chase sequence that led to the submarine. Um, you know how at the end he kind of bit off a tooth and it was cyanide? Vralmak is doing the exact same thing and it's likely that every single Romulan on this ship is doing the same thing. So I'm going to let you guys react to it, but if something is not done, the Romulans are all going to commit suicide here. Eek. Um, why so, do you stun? I mean, that solves our problem. That's actually... Well, I was going to grab him by the throat. But, uh, yeah, I will actually stun him so he can't bite down on whatever capsule is in his mouth. Okay. And any other Romulan that's on the bridge. Okay. Uh, I would say because of Rizazo's, uh complication... Uh, the difficulty here is actually going to be a four because Vrolmok is going to try and make a break for it or at least dive out of the way so that uh, neither uh, you nor the guards around him can get a shot on him. Uh, so you're rolling a control security and the difficulty here is a four and I'm going to spend some threat to make the complication range six or 17 to 20. Okay, and... Um, uh even though I sometimes am called a bad one, uh, I'm an intelligence officer, so I'd like to use my advantage knowing that Tal Shiar are cowards and will kill themselves before they are captured. Mm -hmm. And uh, down the difficulty with the advantage. Okay, yeah, that'll bring it down to a difficulty three. Um, and we have one momentum. Um, I will go ahead and spend it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't take a minor action, correct? I would say you could take a minor action. This is We're not really in initiative order, but we are kind of in combat, so yeah, you could take a minor. Um, can I take a minor action to aim? Sure. Which does... Where's the combat log? I'm pretty thingy. sure it lets you re-roll a d20 on the attack. I believe so, yes. Okay, so we'll do that. Yeah, you can uh, roll a single d20 made on the attack before the start of your next turn. That. Complication. And Game I would like great. to re-roll that complicated d20. Alright. Because, to be perfectly honest, it honestly can't get much worse. Well, <laughs> you say that. Well, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I get another complication? Yeah. yeah. Which I already have one complication. Singularity. Right, but a, a reroll doesn't mean that complication stays, and I just add another t uh, dice on it. So oh. the worst that can happen is I stay at what oh, I'm at. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So go ahead and reroll. Let's let's see what uh, what comes up. Another complication. Oh well. I so mean, this, this is just meant to be. I die. <laughs> so I I probably actually, should have made an actual map for this because it's going to be a little bit difficult to describe. But uh, if you will imagine that uh, Rizazo and Drake, uh, let's just very quickly draw something here. Uh, let's get a color that we can actually see. All right. So, so thanks. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to thank Drake for giving a shout out to the flag of Italy with that role. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico too. All right. So let's assume that uh, Vralmok is sitting in a chair and that blue line behind him is the wall. Uh, these blue X's are going to be the guards uh, that are on either side. And I'd like Drake uh, and Rizazo to put yourselves uh, on this theater of the mind. And let me turn off grid so that you can actually kind of position yourselves appropriately. Uh, position yourselves where you would want to be. And free pack, you're like over here. I'm currently cowering behind a com. Yeah. I mean, Rizazo is right in front of the him to be threatening him. Okay. So with that complication, Drake, uh, you will be hitting Vralmok, but you also will be hitting Rizazo. So I need you to roll me your phaser damage, please. Uh, this is not good. Go hard. It's okay. Phrasing? <laughs> <laughs> I can take it. Oh, the phrasing. Oh, dear. Well, I have good news, and I have bad news. 
The good news is you successfully stun Vrolmok and prevent him from killing himself. The bad news, Rizazo, you take eight stress worth of damage, which is an injury. I, I take six stress because I'm a Horda. Oh, still an injury, though. Yes, it is, though. I will spend my determination to keep up despite my grievous injury. Okay. All right, so that is Drake's action, and Vralmok is not, he's, he's, he's out, he's stunned. Um, but it is now Free Pack and Rizazo. You each get a turn, and this is to represent how you maybe try to stop the rest of the ship from doing what Vralmok was trying to do. What are the guards doing? Uh, the guards on the bridge are immediately trying to lock down the rest of the Romulans. And we'll say that they do succeed at a variable rate, but we'll worry about that in a moment. I the two that are here next to this guy. Oh, the two that are next to him are definitely going to uh, get even closer and literally manacle Vralmok now. All right. I have no intention of stopping these people from taking their lives, uh, but I would like to get to an actual working console and see what I can about the singularity collapsing. Okay. So let's say you use your miner to stand up and get to a new console. And your action would be another insight engineering. Uh, given combat situation, I'm going to raise this to a difficulty of four with some threat. I'm assuming that the Romulans have some sort of like security procedure like the Federation does where they can like anesthetize the decks. They they could possibly. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my um talents right here to see if I can get any of them to work. Yeah, I'm just filling the dead air. Are there any consoles left other than the one for free pack? Is there? Oh yeah, yeah. The free pack is not at the only working console. You could uh, Rizazo go up to one yourself and attempt such a procedure. Yeah, that's what he'd be doing, is moving over to the, the tactical officer's thing and trying to be like... Uh, oh, I had Seek Advantage. I could have re-rolled one of those D20s. Well, lessons learned. All right. So uh, with uh, the two successes here, uh, reminder, it was a difficulty four. So I'm going to say this will succeed at cost. But I'm going to say it will be a complication. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'll make it more exciting. Okay. So, uh, Free Pack, when you look at the Singularity Core again, uh, you see that uh, Protocol Omega is now overloading that core. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, a human! Human! Uh, Bondi! Real, real quick, as you start shouting, uh, Rizazo. Uh, let's do your anesthesine thing. Um, I'm trying to figure out what this would be. Maybe a control security difficulty three? Sounds good. All right. Don't think I can just uh, Starfleet protocol as a focus? I don't think that. Nah, it's not really. If you were on a Starfleet ship, I would yeah. say yes, but you're you're on a Romulan one, unfortunately. I guess I'm going to give you more threat for a third die. Yeah. Because that's what I'm doing with this character this time. <laughs> Just throwing threat at you. Oh! So, good thing you have bolt security. <laughs> yes, I'm going to reroll that uh, that fail. Uh, that... <laughs> Although the, the perfect computation was that they don't have a necessity and they have poisonous gas. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say, that, that, that would have been a very interesting But that would be a Romulan move. So yeah, I'm, I'm rerolling the, the complication. Okay. I'm hoping for a one, but... Oh, so. Okay. Uh, so you get two successes here. I will offer you the same thing. Uh, this can succeed, but at a cost. Yeah, that's what he, he wants to save lives. Okay. Corners don't kill, so, yeah. I would like you, in this case, to roll me a 1d100, and whatever you roll is the percentage of Romulans you save. Oof. All right. It's going to need to be tragic. Yeah. Wow. Hey, all right. You save 82% of the Romulans, so I'll math that in the moment. Uh, but, uh, Rizazo, your uh, robot arm kind of dances across the console and 
anestazine or whatever the equivalent thereof for the Romulans spreads out across the ship. But, Freepak, you were just shouting something, so resume your shouting. Human! Human! Uh, yes, Chief? This ship is gonna blow. We need to get off here now. Like yesterday. Uh, understood that, and Drake will hit his... No, uh, you don't understand. It's getting worse. You know, I, that that their subject routine, it's it's getting so, faster. So while while Frypack is still screaming at me, all the things that he's screaming at me, mm -hmm. uh, Drake's gonna hit his comm badge, uh, call to the uh, Amalthea to start uh, transporting off all Starfleet uh, personnel, with him being the last one, and get oh, all of them back onto the uh, Amalthea. Um, if I can, and to move the ship. Some, if I can throw something in, Amalthea has no sensors. Therefore, yeah. it's transporters we have no idea might what not the be the best call. Okay, then I'll still make that call, and they can tell another ship to do it. Uh, I, unless, well, what's the closest ship to us then? That's, Would it be one of the Callistos? Uh, it would be the Escalts. Let me quickly glance at the map here. Uh, yes, you would have the Callisto, the Europa, and the Ganymede that are the closest. Uh, technically, oh, we have a lot of extra thing. Extra yeah, space. technically the Red November is close enough at this point. Uh, checking my distances nice. here. Um, yes, the Red November. So you have the Europa. In fact, let me just actually put you back on this map so you guys can see what's going on. Yeah. Red November can't hear. Uh, no, it's uh, the May Yuan that can't hear. If oh, I remember right, correctly, the Ophion is within distance for teleporting, uh, transporting. Yeah. Well, true, being they're the ones that got um, Commander Nashrim off. But the problem here is we now have 82% of the Romulan clue to transport off before this thing explodes. Ah, yeah, so, start, start, yeah no, start we're going to have we're gonna have to shut down that Singularity core. I tried. It, 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 it's a, a lot of routine that they've, they've, they've put in. It well, is I mean, an overload. You can try to bypass it. It's just going to be a very high difficulty task. All right, I will attempt, if that is your order. Uh, 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 if I, if, if I, only there was a captain who was trained in engineering currently on the Romulan vessel. Yeah, I was like, they're beaming out. I don't <laughs> want to stop them, but they're beaming out. Uh, speaking of which, at, at what point would uh, Mirthrin and Skull have been able to go, wait, what's going on? Right about now. Cool. Okay. So um, I'd imagine at about this point, Drake gets a comm from Mirthrin. Drake, what's going on in there? First off, I said all Starfleet personnel. I didn't give a shit about the Romulans. <laughs> Second, Second, Drake will respond with their core their core is going to blow up. We need to get all Starfleet off of the ship and now. And move so the escorts, the escorts away. away. Okay. Yep, so Amalfia will just send General Com. All ships, emergency evac, get all Starfleet personnel off the war road. Okay. Would that include me? Because that I is entirely up to you. To... Okay. So then I'll then Drake will say this to Freepok. Do you think you can actually do this in the amount of time that we have? Yes or no? No BS. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, I think so. Are you confident in your skills to be able to shut this down? Yes or no? I, I, I can do it. I can. I can. Okay. I know this. And I know Drake this. Will, Drake will come back and say, get all Starfleet personnel off the ship, except for him and Free Puck. And okay. Rosazo. Understood. I'm not leaving you unattended. Nice. Too bad. Uh, let me see here. Because uh, you're a lieutenant junior grade, aren't you, uh, Rosazo? Yes. All right. So you are now put in the difficult situation of whether or not you disobey orders or if you actually beam out. I'm going to obey orders. Okay. All right. I'm going to obey orders, but I'm going to slide over one of the Romulans that's alive but knocked out on the bridge. Okay. Uh, <laughs> would you like it to be Subcommander Volmok? Was he alive yet? or? Uh, he was he... just stunned. I'm, yeah, I'm going to grab him, have him beamed out with me. Okay. All right. So, uh, doing a quick little bit of thinking here. 
Uh, so free pack, I'm going to give you two options. Uh, the first is that we do a timed extended task, but you only get four intervals. And each attempt at a extended task is two intervals by default, unless you spend either one threat or one momentum to make that attempt one interval. Um, so this extended task would potentially be easier, but it's timed, and if you don't do it in time, bad things All happen. All right. I luckily have many talents to help with this. All right. Many, many, many talents. I have Miracle Worker. Oh, yeah. Um, I've got jury rig, and I've got in the nick of time. Okay, yeah. Then let's let's not even worry Those about the difficulty. Extremely relevant. Yeah, let's not even worry about the difficulty five task I had in mind then. So for this, uh, the work track is going to be a ten. The magnitude is going to be all of a two. Uh, you know what? Actually, let's make it three. Let's make it a magnitude three. Uh, the resistance will be a one. And your default task is a daring engineering. So the the difficulty here at base is going to be a four. I still roll the same two d twenty. Uh, that's up to you, unless you want to spend threat or momentum or your determination. I already you spent just, the determination. You just spent your determination, so you would have to challenge a value uh, in order to. Uh, use determination again. Unless, let me take a look at your fo your uh, values here. I would say if you challenged, you can't make a deal if you're dead, you would get your determination right. back. I would totally challenge that because I'm staying behind on an exploding ship. So. Alright, so that just make a note down. that you'll need to replace that later. But you do get your determination back, and you can use it to either start with two automatic successes, or you can save it till after you've rolled to re-roll your dice pool. I will take the two automatic successes. Okay. And are you buying any additional dice with threat, or, well, I guess you don't have momentum, so with threat? I will buy one additional. Okay. Dice. So then you're going to be rolling 3d20, please. And we need to see at least two. We see at least two, so that's important. Uh, I so would we... like to re-roll that complication with my Seek Advantage talent. Okay, go for it. Since I spent that determination, I can re-roll the D. Which I believe is a, uh, a crit for you. So you get three momentum, which is important. And uh, let's have you do two plus five. So seven challenge dice, please, for your work track. Wow, very nice. Okay, when I whenever you succeed in an Great. engineering ooh, ooh, or ooh, science ooh. attack as part of an extended test, you score one additional work for every effect. Okay, so that's let's count. That's time. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, I said it had a work track of ten, and it. Mercer had some competition for best engineer. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure because you have five, which is a breakthrough. You have Miracle Worker, another breakthrough. And you completed the work track, so literally, and I get an extra breakthrough because I of uh, miracle worker. Yeah, so literally, you just did three breakthroughs at what you knocked this thing immediately out. So um, uh, tell me, how does Free Park absolutely kill it with stopping this meltdown? Yes, please tell us. I'm interested. Uh, he is absolutely sweating. The the it's just rolling off the ridges. And uh, he is like, I, I've got to make a good impression. Got to make a good impression. I got to do this. Got to do this. Got to do this. And he, it just clicks in his head. He's like, uh, This is like, this is like when the Firebird or the Firestorm was overloading. The time when we had to go around the the uh, the, the Denarius Belt. Uh, uh, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? What did I, do? I, did. I got it. 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 Human. Human. I got it. And then he turns back to the console and just his fingers fly over it just at light speed. And then you, you just you hear you see all the bars on the console slowly go back down from critical. All right. So this time, uh, the core actually fully deactivates at this point. That is the side effect: is that you have saved the ship and all aboard, but the engine is completely dead now. Well, that certainly makes our options a lot simpler. 
he free proc collapses against the uh, console and goes, "I really need to go play a game of of uh, of of uh, Dabo right now. I'm so lucky." Uh, Drake just kind of sees him collapse and like rushes to him to like, uh, you know, check him for whatever to make sure that he's still breathing and whatnot. Um, and then obviously the computer tells us that the core is not melting down anymore. Correct. Wonderful. Drake will hit his column after checking to make sure that, uh, that <laughs> free Pac is, uh, still breathing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, Drake to Almathea. Mithrin here, go ahead. You've got competition for the best engineer in this little fleet. Uh, the uh, ship is still in one piece. Everybody on it is still mostly alive. But she has no more engine. Mm-hmm. I'm and uh, uh, I, I think uh, Chief Freepok needs some time off and some Dabo girls. <laughs> I give him a thumbs up. Uh, we'll look up. through the holodecks. I'm sure there's a program. And uh, uh, um, I have the perfect thing. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm going to replace you can't make a deal if you're dead. Uh, when in doubt, lie. Oh, okay. I like it. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, he didn't know he could do it. And Drake will, uh, uh, he'll finish up. And, uh, uh, Captain Merthyn, can you send over, um, send over the security guys again? If you want to come back over, I think it'll be safe. And send medical teams because, well, the Tal Shiar did what the Tal Shiar does. As they do. Right, uh,. And he'll turn to... Um, who, who would be the person who'd handle, like, logistics on the bridge? Uh, logistics on the bridge would either be uh, Gorteg or would be actually Rizazo. Okay. So, Merthrin also reacts. All right. Uh, Merthrin to security, arrange to uh, start reorganizing teams to beam back over to the Benala. Uh, Lieutenant Rizazo... Uh, start drawing up plans for a to drop the surviving Romulans onto a colony on that class N planet. Aye, Captain. We'll find Skull nods silent. silent. Sorry, Skull nods, Skull nods silently nods. at this. Yep, and Mirth rolls, uh, and Mirth rolls sort of look over and go, "We gave them their chance. We did." All right. So I'm sure they'll be happy. We'll give them some lovely beaches. Um, uh, love beaches. Drake will uh, will look at uh, Freepok with a big smile and goes, now the hard work starts. You get to rip this whole thing apart. Give me a second here, boss. <laughs> and with a smile, he'll help him back up to his feet. All right. So, uh, because we haven't uh, given Preer enough screen time today, we're actually going to cut to the sick bay, or wherever Preer would be operating out of. Uh, Preer, uh, you are basically having to go through every single Romulan and removing their uh, false tooth or whatever false part of them would be used to self-harm, basically. Um, So... We're going to do this as an extended task, and we'll say that uh, this is more or less to help you guys with momentum, but uh, let's just have you do a control and medicine, and the work track will be a 12, the difficulty base will be a 2, and the magnitude will be a 3. Would infectious diseases count as a focus? Unfortunately, no, because it's not an infectious disease that is killing them. Mm. Uh, Xenobiology? Only the infectious disease of nationalism! (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would say uh, xenobiology would apply because they're Romulans. What was that you cut out? Uh, It would apply. Xenobiology would apply. Awesome. I'm going to buy a third die. Okay. And, and before you make a that. roll, I'm actually going to spend some threat 
and a complication arrives in the form of Lieutenant Jensen. I just turn and look at him. Jensen, I'm busy! But, but Doc, my arm! And you look at his arm, and it's actually, he's cut himself pretty bad. Dear God, what did you do? I was kayaking on the holodeck. You know, I'm not even going to ask why you were doing that. Take a seat, I'll get to your arm in a minute. Alright, so while Jensen is in your sick bay, the complication range increases to 18 to 20. So, <laughs> so. Uh, let's see, do you want to re-roll any of that? Because that would be two complications. Yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-roll the one. Okay. Because I have cautious medicine. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Today is just Today not is your guys' day. So, so how many more Romulans die in the process? Uh, that's a good question. Um, let me, let's, them. let's do it this way. Uh, I'd like you to roll me, let's say, 10 challenge die. And if we see effects, then a certain number will die. Okay, so you actually only lose... Let me just uh, pull up a calculator here. So 10% of 490 is... You lose 49 Romulans. But the remaining 443 are still operable. So you can attempt again. Uh, it is still a difficulty of... Uh, what did I say? Three? Mm -hmm. Or no, it was a difficulty two. Sorry. Um, so it is still a difficulty two. Uh, it would still be control medicine. It's still a complication range, 18 to 20. Um, another momentum, maybe? Yeah. Okay, so you're down I'll to one it. momentum. Wow. Just, just Jeez. wow. Just, just wow. Uh, yeah, if you could roll me another 10 challenge dice, please. Well, I'm going to use cautious medicine. Oh, right. I keep forgetting. Sorry. Go Dr. Ahead. Death over here. <laughs> All right. Very good. You get a momentum back. Uh, yeah. Now roll me uh, two plus four, six challenge dice, please. And this is your work track. I mean, what what was that line from Pike on the latest episode of Discovery? For oh, the I don't know. He has so next, many good ones. The teaser for the next episode, complications mean we die. <laughs> Spend your determination. <laughs> we can't survive complications. Complications there you go. Die. All right, so Prier, you have the option here of either spending a momentum to reroll those zeros, spending a momentum for an extra work to get a breakthrough, or just letting it stand. I'm going to spend a momentum to get the to reroll the three zeros. Go for it. Okay, very nice. Uh, do you have any talents that affect extended tasks? I don't believe so. Okay. What is combat? medic it's the only one i don't have okay so uh i don't think combat medic applies yeah co combat medic is something with first aid it doesn't do extended tasks I think. yeah and i have a uh, quick study for my other one okay good to know um all right so in that case you do get a breakthrough uh you complete seven out of 12 work done and the difficulty drops down to a one and as long as you don't roll another complication you can save the remaining 443 people all right. So I'm literally imagining as as you're doing the role that Prier and his staff are going from Romulan to Romulan, almost triage, and just removing almost as quick as they can whatever implant they have and sealing them back. Yeah, I'd imagine it's a case of yeah, I'd imagine it's a case of like the Tal Shiar do not want it to be possible to easily remove. So yeah, it's, yeah, probably it's, not. And Jensen's just sitting over here in the waiting room. Well, Jens. Well, yeah, he's he's over here. Uh, but he's he's starting to bleed out. Like I'm making him take stress damage behind the scenes. Oh dear God. Um, but you did succeed. Uh, so you can roll another six challenge die, and you did get a momentum, which you could then turn around and re-roll those zeros with. Yes, that's what's going to happen. All right, that is enough. 
So you and your staff are able to save all 443 Romulans. However, you now have to treat Jensen. The good news, how you treat Jensen's up to you and it's not a task. Abusively. <laughs> Jensen, <laughs> Jensen, get over here. And I gra- I go and replicate stitches. Okay. So he's like, Doc, Doc, I'm, I, suture him. I'm sorry. I, I didn't see the rock in time. And uh, I'm sorry to be a bother. It's all in a day's work, Jensen. Next time, maybe don't use the holodeck when we're dealing with Romulans. Wait. Oh, and it's almost like Jensen's noticing the Romulans in your sick bay for the first time. Well, why are there Romulans here? You are oblivious. Well, it's more that I don't think you've announced your entire situation to the full crew yet. Oh, that, that could be. Yeah, Mothran will have to address that at some point. But yeah. And I don't even uh, give him any local anesthetics. I just start suturing him. <laughs> and he grits his teeth and he grunts in pain, but he he does his best. When he grunts, does he and bites down, does he bite down hard enough to say crack a tooth that needs to be replaced? <laughs> <laughs> um, funny, but no. Jensen has inflicted enough torture on the medical bay for one session. Indeed. It's almost like a quota. The funny thing is you can't actually bite hard enough to break a tooth unless your teeth are already in bad shape to begin with, which knowing Jensen is a thing. Maybe. It's only if you put something in your mouth and then bite down on that that you could break I would assume Gortek would have at least taken a ship to yellow alert when the uh, evacuation oh, yeah. started. Probably, yeah. So, with uh, the excitement all died down, uh, we're actually going to go to a place we haven't been yet. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to go to the captain's ready room, where, Mirthrin, uh, you've taken a breather, and you are sitting in your conference room, uh, just or your ready oh, room. Oh, that is actually perfect, because I had vague ideas of Mirthrin has a standing desk, because he's that kind of engineer. Mm-hmm. This place has a standing desk does indeed so uh Mirthrin, you've gotten the reports of everything that's just happened uh prayer is reported in uh free pack is reported in and i'm curious as to what Mirthrin would be doing with all this information <clears throat> well it sort of takes it all in takes a deep breath well he does need to sort of do a, a sort of a ship-wide announcement to the crew sort of to get them up to speed mm-hmm. and uh, out of character he would sort of just write up uh, a speech in the rhymes of okay here's the story <clears throat> we got tailed by a Romulan warbird and chucked out of the wormhole at a wild angle and we are currently 10 years travel from the end of the wormhole itself and we currently have the bridge crew of the Romulan ship in custody, and we're going to drag them back to the Federation to stand trial. In the meantime, the surviving Romulan crew are going to be stuck in our colony world, and for the, for, for the near future, the next month or two, the focus is going to be on getting the ships repaired, finding our footing, finding out where we are, and where to go from there. Okay. So and your, your speech will communicate all of that. Yeah. And it's basically just going to be a case of, okay, this is a bad situation, but it could be a lot worse. We are in shape. We have supplies. We are not going to sort of be fighting for basic survival out here. All right. And we will make sure you all get home. Very good. And uh, okay. after that, I think the next thing... Uh, well, probably let anyone else do stuff they want to do first, but uh, Mirthrun is definitely going to go to see Nostream and the Ophion at some point. Okay, so real quick, we'll open the floor. Uh, does anyone have any scenes in particular they'd like to have? Uh, Freepok is enjoying a very thick snail steak in whatever the cantina is. 
At, and he uh, is, and he, is he is sharing, huh? Uh, the bar name. It's one flew north. He is he is retelling the tale to everyone, and it gets more grandiose every time he. I like it. You'll become um, a little bit of a, a legend. Uh, no, no scenes, but just like, I guess, behind the scenes or logging actions, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um. When the Admiral is done debriefing, talking down to, or whatever, Drake, uh, he will have dinner with uh, Zareed and tell her everything that just happened. Mm -hmm. um, and the other flip side is Beckett will have his family dinner with, in air quotes, with the senior staff and tell them what they are going to be doing. Noted. I have a quick thing I'd like to talk with uh, Gortag about on the bridge. On the bridge, sure. Oop. We'll say Mirthrin's not there at the moment, but uh, yep. you can go ahead and have your little scene. Commander Gortag, sir, if I may. Yes, Lieutenant. As there's not been much... Uh, fleet action since the near and near imminent death and demise of the IRW Bernal, I took the uh, chance to review all crew records of the senior staff that I'll be working with. And I can't help but notice that you have received a commendation from the Klingon High Command as a an, as a Lok Tok Dar Tribble Veshtal, which I believe translates to Vanquishing of the Tribble Menace? That is correct. I was under the impression that the Tribbles have been extinct now for roughly a century. That is not correct. Oh, well then I uh, give you Kapla, sir. Thank you, Lieutenant. It was a glorious battle against the fiercest enemy the Klingon Empire has ever known. And it was good to be there with members of my house and my crew. Had a character. I'm, glorious. Had a character. I'm just sure. I'm just envisioning Gortag. There's just fields of tribbles, and Gortag with his batleth just keeps swinging and swinging, and there's no end to them, and they just keep purring and multiplying. In, it's a whole in, thing. In his head and the story he'll tell, that's probably what it is: is him wading through just fields of tribbles, but we all know what really happened was a tribble jumped on him and he freaked out, screamed like a little girl and shot it a bunch of times. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Pretty much. As did the rest of the crew. Except for the one Serto Draco who had one between their horns. Mm. Oh, yes, that's right. It was just yeah. sort of standing there going, well, this is amusing. Oh. Uh... Add a character, uh, side reference to anyone on the stream. If you uh, go watch the Ophion Klingon special, episode two, you'll know what we're talking about. And if you don't feel like going back and watching two episodes, just know that it was a glorious battle, that we won victoriously, and we did not scream like little girls. <laughs> Playbury didn't at all. Yeah. Uh, that's it. I'm... I'm Okay. Uh, Locke, uh, or uh, Rosazzo, do you have anything? Uh, Rosazzo would like to talk to uh, Lieutenant Drake. Sure, where would you like to sort of flag Drake aside? On the bridge? In a room? Room, corridor, wherever we happen to... Okay, let's, uh, let's actually use this map, because I don't think we've... Uh, well, we've used it once, but... Uh, Let's put it to some good use. So you can uh, you can go ahead and get started as I get token situated here. It says, oh no, we brought Garrick to the Gamma Quadrant with us. Has anyone <laughs> checked? No. <laughs> Would we be surprised? Make sure no. if, uh, someone check to see if Rosazzo is in in, that, in fact uh, Garrick. It's a very cunning disguise. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, where... there, it is. there he is. I was like, where did I put Drake? Yeah. There he so is. As he's passing the hallway. Stop it, Commander. Word uh, I would like to have with you. Uh, yes, Lieutenant. Uh, what can I do for you? I acknowledge it is your superior officer, but I do not appreciate being 
removed from a situation while there are people in my charge still in danger. Drake right. will just kind of nod with a smile, little smile on his face and let him continue. It's Frypack was still in field. I should, my duty was to be with him, not return to ship. If You're anyone right, right. would have been removed, should have been you, Lieutenant Commander Drake. You are higher ranking superior. I am more expendable. No. No. Nobody's more expendable than me. Especially you. On this fleet, where you're the only representative of your species. Is this Also, I am better shot than you, apparently. <laughs> my, my job is better served in fields. Hmm. You might be right. <laughs> and uh, I apologize for sending you away when it was your crew that was in danger. Next time, I'll uh, I'll remember that, but I'm not leaving. So, it'll be you and I there with the uh, Ferengi next time. Right. Next time, I watch your back. And Drake will just kind of nod and smile. Yep. Next time, you'll watch my back. Because you cannot shoot me if you are in front. This is also true. That that was humor. And it is at this point that none other than freaking Garrick kind of walks down the corridor and says, I actually believe it is quite possible for him to shoot you in the back if he so wishes. Well, technically I do not have a back or front. Wait. Were you not left at Deep Space Nine? Well, there was some sort of clerical error, and I slept through my alarm. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> uh, I, will, I will defer to my commander. Yeah, and Rascazo scoots out of frame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, scuttle, 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 scuttle. Uh, uh, Drake will put his arm around Garrick and start walking him towards let's say the Admiral's Quarters, uh -huh. or the turbo lift to the Admiral's Quarters. So let me tell you a really long story, and it has to do with how untrustworthy the Romulans are, and how annoying some Vulcans are. So, and then he'll walk into the turbo lift and tell him the whole story. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, we're now going to cut to the brig, because uh, Mirthrin wanted to meet with Nostreen. So yeah, Mirthrin, uh, when you arrive at the brig where Nostreen is being held, uh, there are a number of security personnel on hand uh, that are, you know, ready in case Nostreen makes a break for it or anything. But for now, they seem to be uh, behind a force field in an uh, environment suitable for Tholians. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 2,000 Starfleet personnel... 400 Romulans, all stranded in the Gamma Quadrant, and 200 Romulans dead. I hope you're happy with yourself. It is the will of the Typhon Pact that this happened. So the Tholians are working with the Romulans now. If you had paid attention, we have been working with them for quite a while. <sighs> I will not comment on the irony of the Tholians not trusting anyone and allying themselves with the most untrustworthy race in the Alpha Quadrant. Still, I would like to know, was this merely you following orders or was this personal? You were chief engineer of the Ophion, yes? Indeed I was then you know the slight that you did to my ship, the Adelicite. I remember the Adelicite uh, reneging on the armistice and attempting to pull us into a black hole. You were the aggressor, not us. Hmm. Well, we'll leave that for the Federation course to decide in... Uh, 
however many years it takes us to get back, assuming we ever do. You mean to keep me here for ten years? Well, maybe not here specifically. We're working on converting one of the cargo bays. But, uh, assuming you don't give us any trouble, I wouldn't be adverse to asking them to add, to take the ten years in confinement into account when you get sentenced. I am so thrilled. And it, it, it's higher pitched than that, but hopefully the sarcasm yep. is going to cross. Um, now, I forget if um, Betazoid empathic abilities work on Tholians. I don't think they do. No, because they have a completely, well, I hate, hate to use the word alien, but they have an alien physiology in that they are crystalline in nature. They don't necessarily have the same sort of thing yeah, they're just m- missing all that humanoid brain chemistry right so yeah you so unfortunately yeah, you... get nothing from Nostreen well I'm sure we'll be talking plenty over the next few years any last thing any last gloating you want to get done while I'm here only that if what the Romulans say is true and you did blow up that station this is your hell and I welcome to you I welcome you to it the universe does have a certain sick sense of humor I'll agree and he walks out all right so I think that is actually the perfect way to end the episode so I'm going to end the stream here Uh, So anyone watching our Twitch or YouTube, thank you so much, and we will see you later. Bye, stream!